I really want to get into this as soon as possible, so we don't have time for a more elaborate intro. Now, in the title, we asked a pretty clear question. Why do Monster Hunter vets love the old skill system? Are they boomer hunters of legend that just long for their Monster Hunter of days past? Is this just another one of the issues that has people clinging to nostalgia? Just to be transparent and upfront, I'm a fiver through and through. I started with World and have loved the series ever since. Iceborne is still my favorite entry in the series. My journey didn't stop with the New World though. I've gone backwards through the series and played Generations Ultimate, 4 Ultimate, and 3 Ultimate with plans of going even further back. Admittedly, in my early Fiverr days, when people would talk about the Old World skill system, negative skills and such, my first reaction would be, why would people want that? Now looking back, my thought on how complicated the skill system used to be was shaped largely from what I heard from other hunters. They would speak of how you would have to have all these spreadsheets and all kinds of of math and well just a bit of a spoiler alert if you haven't played the older games but none of that was actually true you just have to be able to do basic addition and subtraction with your highest totals reaching 15 and on rare occasions slightly higher this video isn't being made to make you feel foolish or triggered if you don't want to go back to the old ways it's more so intended to give you insight as to why people prefer the old skill system now that we've put the myth to rest let's take a deep dive and really see why vets of the series Series, love the old skill system. This section is going to be more for people that may not have played any of the Monster Hunter games prior to 5th gen, or even some that may have tried to but decided to move on. We'll keep it simple here so we don't overwhelm you or unnecessarily confuse you. Let's say you're just getting into G rank in Gen U. You want some boost to your attack, so you're going to go with the Yon Kutku full set. The helm gives you plus 3 fire attack, plus 4 attack, and minus 3 defense with one deco slot. The chest gives us plus 2 to fire attack, plus 4 to attack, and minus 3 defense with 1 deco slot. The arms give us plus 7 fire attack with 1 deco slot, and that's it. The waist gives you plus 3 fire attack and minus 2 defense with 1 deco slot. And finally, the legs give you a whopping plus 6 attack with negative 2 defense and 2 whole deco slots to work with. If we total that up, we'll be starting at plus 15 fire attack, plus 17 attack, and minus 10 defense. In the old world, when it comes to skills you work with, a total points threshold kind of system. Fire attack, for example, works like this. If you reach a total of 10, you'll receive fire attack plus one. And if you reach 15 total points or more, you'll receive fire attack plus two. On the opposite side of things, if you have negative 10 or lower, you'll simply receive fire attack down. The attack skill works similarly with an additional threshold. A total of 10 points in attack will give you attack up small. 15 will give you attack up medium. 20 will give you attack up L. And just like fire attack, there are negative possibilities. A negative 10 in attack will give you attack down small. Negative 15 will give you attack down medium. Negative 20 will give you attack down large. So let's take a look at Kutku armor totals with these thresholds in mind. We have plus 15 and fire attack, so we've reached the fire attack plus 2 threshold. We have plus 17 in attack, so we've reached the attack up medium and are close to the attack up large threshold. On the negative side of things, we have negative 10 in defense, which would result in us getting defense down small. So as it stands, we have fire attack 2, attack up medium, and defense down small. Now, just like in 5th gen games, we have charms and decorations to help boost up skills. Charms operate more like they do in Rise. You'll get them with two skills paired up in a number of slots while decorations themselves are craftable. These obviously help to make things more flexible. Where we stand now there's plenty of routes we could take. Do we want to slot in some defense and get rid of that defense down? Or are we going to ride with that defense down and boost that attack up a bit more to get attack up L? Or maybe we just start working on getting more skills in there. You see how even just in the basic sense, you get so much versatility out of the old world system. And there's that gratifying reward at the end of it when you take the good with the bad and have that sense of risk versus reward. Hell, it even feels better when you have to find a way to a eliminate that risk altogether, even if you had to sacrifice some power. And this is just a full set. Just imagine how awesome of sets you could theory craft with this system and how good it would feel in the end when the numbers match up just the way you want it to. I know some of you already are salivating at those cutku greaves with the attack plus six and two slots. This part is something that I think would immediately turn people away from the old world system if they just look at it at face value. 
They have the thought that the negative parts of the armor are going to be so detrimental to set building or what they want to achieve. That's definitely not the case. There's nothing about the old skill system that's insurmountable. If you want a skill, you can get it, regardless of what skills are paired up as the negative. The beauty in this implementation of negative skills is the fact that it helps to keep some semblance of balance. I'm not saying that they make the balance perfect, definitely not, but they still give at least some balance. We've seen what happens when you don't have negative skills at all in Worldborn and Rise. Like I said, Iceborne is still my favorite entry in the series, but it's undeniable the amount of skills you can jam into a set with absolute ease, it's nuts. It didn't get any better in Rise, and with the coming Sunbreak expansion and Master Rank ahead, we'll get to see just how bad it can get. I know people are going to use Fatalis armor and things to make it seem like it's justified since it's endgame armor, but it wasn't just Fatalis gear that lets you stack skills. The problem was always there, it just became more prominent as you went through the game. This is where negative skills could come in to help rein things in a bit. You would have to at least give some thought as to what you're going to put into your build because for every tenderizer decoration you put into your build, you'd lose one point of health boost maybe. Now, of course, it very rarely happens that you would hit the threshold where you'd lose out on health, but you did have to keep that in mind and take steps to prevent yourself from doing so. Now, whether or not you feel like there was enough risk versus reward with the old world system is a discussion for another day, but it's indisputable that there was risk versus reward as to now where there's absolutely none. I even took a look at some of the first armor sets I have in my saved loadouts, and it blows my mind the difference in the number of skills. It was nothing to have double digit amount of skills at pretty much any point in Iceborne. It's a combination of not just the armor pieces not having negative skills, but also the decorations not having negative skills, so that makes them even more potent in set building. Now, another side of negative skills was the fact that you could actually take them and use them to your benefit. The example that was used in a tweet in a response to my own tweet was that they would take Fuhrer or the Resentment skill and combine this with taking negative points in recovery speed to help prolong the amount of time that they would have with a red health bar. Obviously that's just one example, but I feel like it's another point towards reintroducing negative skills. The amount of creativity and hidden combos you could slide in would be phenomenal, and getting to figure out those combos as a community experimenting would be so much fun. When you get outside of the realm of attack skills, there's a large variety of defensive and utility skills that will help you directly and indirectly through your hunts. I'm a longtime advocate of evade extender and earplugs, but I can't deny that even those two skills specifically feel so much more impactful when I use them in Gen Yu than they do in Iceborne or Rise. Why? Because it's just too easy to jam in every skill under the sun in 5th generation games. Things like earplugs, evade extender, evade window, free mill, health boost, recovery up, etc. all go from skills that are noticeable and impactful when you have them to why wouldn't you use them. It's another example of the risk versus reward that is slowly but surely being shoved away. If I use any of these defensive utility or quality of life skills in Gen U, it's a given that I'm going to have to give up something like an extra level in attack up, crit eye, weakness exploit, razor sharp, or sharpness. I do it all the time, and then when I may have to sharpen a little more often than usual, I'll willingly accept that so I can get that punishing hunter art off or finish my recital through a monster's roar. When you go from having 5, maybe 6 skills on average to literally double digit skills on average, it isn't surprising that you'll have the non-attack skills value feel a bit diluted. Even the most meta of sets such as Josina and Gen Yu don't even come close to the skill packing we can achieve extremely early in 5th gen. Threshold system versus incremental system. Which one has it right? Or does it even matter? The number one thing that sticks out between the two is the fact that thresholds more so incentivize full sets. With the incremental system, you immediately gain a skill as soon as you put on a single piece of armor. Right off the bat, you're less incentivized to run that full set and you're pushed more towards finding out what the best piece of armor is in each of the sets. I still remember when we first got our hands on the Garuga legs in Iceborne and then proceeded to never take them off. 
We saw a similar type of thing with pieces like the Anjanath Waste and Rise. Even if you take the absolute best piece in a Gen U, 4U, or 3U, you're not going to get multiple skills, let alone a single skill. That's because of the threshold system in older games. Each armor piece gives you points towards the skill, but you don't actually benefit from it until you hit a certain number of points. This does multiple things, but first I want to ask you, when was the last time you wore a full set? I'm not talking about layered or transmogged, I'm asking when you legit made a monster's entire armor set and used it specifically. I know in the hundreds of hours I've spent in both Gen U and 4U, that would be very recent. In Rise and Iceborne, maybe the very start of the game? With the old world armors, you know for a fact those full armor sets will be guaranteed to have the right amount of points to meet the threshold for multiple skills. Now, I know you're mostly the kind of person who likes to make mixed sets, and that's fair, because it's fun, and you get to see your hard work play out in the field. Now, take a moment where you felt beyond proud of yourself for a mixed set you've made. Take that feeling and double. No, triple it. That is the feeling you get putting together a good mix set in the old world system. You take the various things that we've talked about in negative skills, thresholds, and more, and turn those obstacles into a powerful armor set. Theory crafting sets and seeing them come to life is a large part of the fun when it comes to Monster Hunter. Right now, I'm sure there's plenty of you watching the video that are still thinking about the Cutku leg piece I talked about earlier that gave you plus six to attack with two slots. And if you weren't, now you are. I'm not saying that the magic of set building is completely gone in 5th gen, but it's much, much easier. Like basically throwing 15 darts and most of them landing in an incredibly large bullseye. Don't get me wrong, set building in the old world is definitely more complicated, but it's definitely much more rewarding. In all things, you need some sort of balance, and if we're being honest with ourselves, that balance isn't there when it comes to how powerful we are as hunters and how fast we achieve that power. It's no hidden fact that 5th gen is pushing us further and further into a speedrunner's dream, and that's perfectly fine, but there's inevitable changes that come with that. Take attack boosting skills for example. In 4U, you could invest a heavy amount of skill space and armor selection to attack up and get a whopping plus 25 if you went for attack up XL. Shift to Iceborne and attack boost 7 will give you plus 21 attack and an extra 5% affinity. Now, attack boost 4 was the sweet spot for that affinity, but let's be real. Was it ever really that hard to get those last 3 points of attack boost without sacrificing anything? Fast forward to Monster Hunter Rise, and you push things even further. Attack boost is changed to start giving you flat increases to your attack power once you hit certain thresholds. When you max out attack up to XL in 4U, again, you get a flat 25 to your raw. You can easily match this and surpass it by the time you make a Rarity 4 Tetranodon weapon in Rise. It sits at 170 raw, and Attack Boost 7 would give you plus 27 raw. Now, just for reference, you could literally get Attack Boost 7 as early as Baroth, and that's just from the armor skills themselves. No Talisman, no Decos. And if we circle back around to one of the first points, there's no negative skills, so you have nothing but opportunity cost as the punishment for trying to slot in all of this attack. Combine this with the fact that we can now get 40% affinity from Crit Eye when it previously capped at 30, and to reach that cap, you had to invest a whole 20 points into Crit Eye. And again, you would have to deal with negative skills while doing this. Even built-in mechanics that were put in place to somewhat stall this, like sharpness, are being made irrelevant through things like Master's Touch, which was introduced in Worldborn. And don't get it twisted. If you enjoy playing through absolutely maximizing the amount of damage, that's more than fair and you should always play the way you want to play. This is more so to point out the fact of how much easier it is to get to that potential. The balance isn't there right now and that gap seems to be getting wider and wider. This video wasn't made to make you feel bad if you love Rise or Iceborne. I'm a fiver. Iceborne will probably always be my favorite in the series, for some time to come at least, from the point of nostalgia and the fact that it's just an incredible game. That doesn't change the fact that I can totally understand why veterans of the series are worried about the direction the franchise is heading when it comes to certain aspects. That person who loves Freedom Unite or thinks For You is the best entry isn't toxic when they're talking about it. There's no 
drama when it comes to the Monster Hunter community. There's people with personal preferences, and you're going to have that with franchises with so many entries and has recently found the mainstream spotlight. The skill system at its core is what makes up a majority of what Monster Hunter is, and when you have drastic changes to that, people are going to feel some type of way about it. Not only did I want to give some insight into why vets of the series feel the way that they do, I want to encourage others to go back and play the older games. You don't have to agree with fans of the older games, but it will absolutely put you on a more common ground when you discuss these things. I couldn't be happier that I've gone back and played games like Gen U, 4U, and 3U. Gen U has become an instant favorite of mine. I can see why the saying, nah, 4U is better, came about, and I have a better understanding as to why people love or hate underwater combat. But those are specific topics for another day. For now, I leave you with one thing. Don't be afraid of the old world skill system. It's not nearly as scary as it's made out to be, and you might just come to appreciate it for what it is. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.